Hi, Dan. How are you? Excellent. Good to hear British voice. Yeah, Where are good. you? Are you in? Are you in the UK? I am. Yeah, I'm over in Taunton in Somerset. I know very well. Cider, lovely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's such a pleasure to speak to you today, especially as I think it's fair to say you are a legend in this comedy world with everything from Ali G to Borat to Bridget Jones, just all, all these iconic British comedy icons. And then, of course, Home Alone is an American icon in many ways. So what was it like for you to come into this project with it being so iconic and beloved? I mean, arguably idiotic, uh, arguably a terrible and foolish decision um uh to take on something so beloved but i think you know uh, uh, as you say as you kind of reel through the things that i've done um uh, as soon as somebody says you probably shouldn't do it or can't do it that's almost what attracts me to a project you know i, I i'm very eager not to make something that 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 feels safe so whether it's the stuff with sasha you know I, that's always obviously innately incredibly risky and 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 dangerous and foolish and that's what i i enjoy the adrenaline of that uh you know through to making de niro do things that he probably shouldn't have done in dirty grandpa um and then this is the you know as the next chapter of that um uh, the challenge was to you know to to make something that felt uh a, you know a worthy successor in the sort of the pantheon of the original movies yeah well, it is a really brilliant family film and again it's such a departure for you because again people will think of you and they'll think of the r-rated things like dirty grandpa like borat so did you have any reservations coming onto a family project like this one that maybe you'd have to tone yourself down or were you excited for that challenge do you think well, I, I, one of the reasons I took the movie on was that um, I have two lovely young daughters, neither of whom have been able to watch a single frame of any movie that I've ever made because it's such kind of unadulterated filth and their mother, my wife, has expressly forbidden uh, them to watch anything that I've ever done. So every now and then you'll find them sort of sneaking onto a computer trying to look at, you know, Borat or Dirty Grandpa or whatever, just because they know that I've, I've done it and they've been, you know, they've been chastised for doing such a thing. So um, my mission and my challenge and my joy was to make something that um, I think they would feel proud of and be able to show their friends and the original uh, movies are my um, youngest daughter's like favorite movies in the world. So uh, I felt it would be just a treat to take it on and 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 do something that that she could be proud of. And I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, but obviously people will have seen in the trailers that Buzz McAllister comes back and he has a cameo in the film and. <laughs> It's such a great moment and there are so many brilliant little Easter eggs, which like I said, I won't spoil for anyone, but how much fun was that for you? And did you consider maybe any other cameos or did you just want to get that one big one in there? Well, I think, you know, the challenge was to respect and pay homage homage to the uh, to the original without feeling overwhelmed and drowned by it and like we were doing a sort of gimmicky throwback to what happened before. So it was about just just making sure that everything felt justified and 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 served this movie and the narrative of this movie so um so we discussed you know the, the various options and then when mikey and and streeter wrote the you know the, the the buzz part of it um it just felt very organic and natural and credible and funny as well and i think uh it just fitted very easily into the movie that we were making and didn't didn't I think sort of jolt you out of it so that felt right whereas other things might I think perhaps have felt a bit sort of token and and uh, and gimmicky yeah absolutely and there are so many great visual gags in this film and the pratfalls and particularly in that second half when all the traps are coming out but for you as a filmmaker how much fun is it to really delve into that side of things and and get to do that more that physical comedy with the cast Oh, it's brilliant. And that's, again, that was one of the big attractions for this film for me was to really sort of flex my muscles in terms of that physical comedy that I haven't necessarily done that much of before. And it was really important to me to uh, do as much practically as I possibly could and not use CGI, because obviously the, you know, the big change in 30 years since the last one is that you can do almost anything with a visual effect. But I wanted uh, to to keep that reality to you know probably see the real fear in the actor's eyes uh when they had things you know 
thrust towards them or pushed off things when they should be pushed off. So I wanted to keep it all very, very real and, and in the world of the, the things that, I, you know, my dad showed me growing up as the sort of the Harold Lloyds and the, the Chaplins and the Buster Keatons and all those sorts of things. And, and again, the sort of the Hanna-Barbera Barbera cartoons that I think, you know, the, the Tom and Jerry's and the Roadrunners that the, the, the sort of the inspiration for this kind of slapstick. So, I, you know, I loved all of that. And, and, and spent a lot of my time, probably an unnatural amount of my time, sort of in advance of making the movie, just walking around my house, trying to see what objects I could use to injure people with, you know, so people would hand me a bottle of water and I go, okay, this could smash someone in a face, you know, or a fork just became a, a weapon every single time. So it becomes all consuming. It's amazing how much you can use in the house to uh, potentially injure your, uh, your housemates. Awesome. And of course, it's one thing I particularly loved about the film is you, you really assembled a great cast of American actors, but then some great British actors as well. So how challenging was that for you logistically, especially as I know the shoot, the shoot was interrupted with COVID? Did that make things harder in that second half? Yeah, I mean, COVID was a, yeah, COVID was a disaster. And if you sort of look carefully, uh, you can see a couple of actors actually sort of didn't come back after COVID. Um, uh, for the second half of shooting that had things written in the script that we just couldn't do because they, they couldn't make it back to Canada because we shot in Canada. And, you know, and, but, you know, testament to everybody that, that, that we all returned with incredible enthusiasm. And for me, frankly, the, the biggest worry of all was whether Archie was going to hit puberty in these six months that we finished, uh, that we weren't shooting. So we finished in March 2000 and came back in October or November. And I sort of call Archie's mum kind of daily, just like going, any signs of good? Is the voice breaking at all? Are there any spots coming up? You know, has he shot up any facial hair? And so uh, it was my great relief that, um, that the, uh, the, yes, the, uh, the puberty didn't hit. In those in those seven months, that would have that would have really derailed us. I could imagine. And on another note, for a second, I know a few years ago there were reports that you were adapting the graphic novel Anya's Ghost, and I was wondering, is that something you're still moving ahead with? And as a filmmaker, do these Marvel and DC movies appeal to you, or or, or not so much? Maybe. Look, I mean, I th I think I take everything on its merits, really, and I'm sort of agnostic whether it's. Marvel or DC or Home Alone or Sasha or Anya's Ghost or any of those things. I think, you know, if something uh, arrives, I'm not really, I'm not really too worried about its, its genesis or where it came from. And the Anya's Ghost script was, was, I loved it. And, um, and Patrick's, uh, Patrick Ness wrote, uh, uh, wrote uh, the original, uh, an adaptation of it that was really fantastic. But what happened with that was that the company, the studio that we were making it with, uh, folded like sort of about three months before we was we were supposed to start shooting. So we had it cast, uh, actually had it cast brilliantly, um, and were getting ready. And then uh, at CBS Films, as it was then, just stopped making films, and then it just kind of evaporated and something else came along. But um, that was fantastic. I you know I loved it. Still have great fondness for that. Yeah, well, I hope you get to revisit it down the line then. Um, going back to this film, of course, something that's changed since 1990, we all have technology in the home now, whether it's internet, mobile phones, or uh, as we see in the film, the technology like home tech, but how challenging was it for you to work around that? Because I think the film does it really cleverly and br brilliantly, but how was difficult was it to, to make that believable? Well, it's incredibly difficult, and obviously as you sit there, you go, well, you know, the world, as you say, is so connected now in a way that it wasn't back then. You're right, mobile phones, internet, all those sorts of things. And obviously in a film, you don't want to spend too much time just going, oh, uh, we can't do this because of this and, and kind of covering off every base. So we spent a lot of time trying to make it seem kind of seamless and effortless that, that Max, the kid, felt very isolated and abandoned. And, you know, the, the beauty is as a, as a 10 year old, as I know with my children, as I say, trying to sneak down and watch my movies that you can, you know, you can isolate a kid from the dangers and uh, and uh, traps of the internet relatively effectively with lots of kind of uh, programs now. So we 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 leaned on that in order to kind of uh, keep Max isolated from the outside world. And and but yes, certainly heading into it, that seemed a challenge. That it took lots of drafts and 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 attempts at it to make it feel feel natural. 
Yeah, well, you did a great job and you did an awesome job with the film. I think people are going to love it, especially moving into Christmas and awesome family film. So thank you so much for your time, Dan. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank big, you. Big fan of your work as well. So it's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Hopefully we'll do it again. Thank you, Josh. Awesome. Thanks.